Ben Shapiro has the reputation of being a great intellectual. Now, I'll say that I am actually dealing with his new book because I have to write a chapter about him for my book. And one of the themes of my book is that this is this whole modern right wing sort of frame and IDW is a massive fight against historicity in general. And while, you know, obviously Sam Harris is structurally a historical and Jordan Peterson has his, you know, uh, mythology over history kind of thing, I would argue. Uh, ben Shapiro does like. I don't even know. It's like 1950s Reader's Digest sort of cartoon. I guess if like a, I don't know, if like an, if like a seventh grader watched like Red Dawn or something and, and got like a quotable book of yeah. classics. I don't, I don't if know. He it's very dumb down if, stuff. If he didn't start as a teenager and instead was just like a 40-year-old <sighs> National Review editor with his exact same opinions, he'd be utterly uh, unremarkable. Well, and I think a lot of people think that, you know, Jonah Goldberg sort of had a reputation of being a, you know, not bright guy, but a guy who, you know, had pretensions of, of intellect but was sort of broadly understood to be, you know, a, a nepotism case with a very limited capacity. Uh, so here is Ben Shapiro. He's talking to Andrew Neil. Now, Andrew Neil is a quite right-wing figure in a British uh, context. I believe he's the editor of The Spectator. Spectator. He's something... Chairman with, of The Spectator. Yeah, chairman of The Spectator. Spectator's right-wing. Yeah, but uh, don't blame him for The Spectator writing puff pieces about Golden Dawn, for instance. Um, because he's not in editorial control. Yeah, that's what he said. Owen Jones went after him for that, and uh, Andrew Neil's like, I don't uh, like, don't put that on me. I'm only the chairman of the whole magazine. <laughs> <laughs> sure, okay, uh, but you know, he's so yes, a man of the right, but he's able to do. I mean, this is just a British interview. If they interviewed any of us, they would go like, "You say you support socialism, however, socialism has killed millions." So. You want people to die, yeah. but uh, Ben Shapiro's in his bag. He's triggered. He's in his feelings, and this is and he's also just ugh, what a whiny little thing. Let's check this out. It is intellectual, uh, intellectual sneering of the highest order to suggest that only the left has has new and decent ideas. Some of the ideas that are popular in your side of politics uh, would seem to take us back to the dark ages, Georgia, new abortion laws, uh, which you are much in favor of, uh, that uh, a woman who miscarries could get 30 years. A Georgian woman who travels to another state for an abortion procedure could get 10 years. These are extreme hard policies. Well, okay, a couple of things. One, I'm not sure, I mean, frankly, I don't know whether you're, are you an objective journalist or are you an opinion journalist? I'm a Just journalist that asks questions. Okay, so you're, in a, you're a supposedly objective journalist calling policies with which you disagree barbaric and no, suggesting I, only one side of the political... I do will just remind you that we highlighted a case a couple of days ago of an 11-year-old rape victim who is pregnant and as that law is currently written could be forced to carry that baby to term. I don't know what other word you would reserve barbarism for, let alone imprisoning women for, you know exercising control over their health i mean to say the least but uh you know so you know but ben again he's getting very triggered and freaked out by this and this is just so interesting i mean this is an entire brand that was built off of going to a college campus and you know superficially through word tricks and gamesmanship eviscerating some 18 year old who asked them a question and he can't even deal with one just sort of basic round of British questioning, which anybody who has any, I mean, it's kind of stunning that, that Ben Shapiro has this little exposure to British media as it seems to you know appear. But anyways, go ahead. The abortion one will continue, but this is the beginning of a prolonged tantrum. 
very barbaric and no, suggesting I, only one side of the political aisle no, has ideas. So I just want to point no, out that no, I, know that I wish, you would, I wish I, you would at least be honest in your own biases. Uh, Mr. So Shapiro, are, are, are I know you, that are you a member of the in America is now so polarized that on one program you only have the left and another one you just have the right. My job well, is to question those who have strong views and put an alternative to them. If you were an anti-abortion anti well anti person, I would be putting <laughs> pro-abortion questions to you. But you are really would you, an anti-abortion Would you call the pro-choice position? So, so, so why don't so you just answer you my question? Sir, sir, I'm happy to answer your question. Please <laughs> you answer this one. Would you suggest, would you suggest oh that a late-term abortion is brutal? I'm not taking a is view on this issue. I'm to asking you to the question. I want to pause it here and bring in our friend Timba on toast yes. and his uh, section from this Dave Rubin, uh, Dave Rubin's Battle of Ideas, Part Three, <laughs> right. uh, explains exactly the little move that Ben Shapiro does called the uh, Mott and Bailey. This is really analyzing useful. the things Stefan says is a fallacy called the Mott and Bailey. The phrase Mott and Bailey comes from medieval castles, which had a particular structure: a gated courtyard area outside the Bailey, where the main settlements were and then a heavily fortified stone keep high up on the hill, the Mott, where everyone would retreat to when hostile forces approached. The Bailey is vulnerable, open to attack, but the Mott is safe, unassailable. The Mott and Bailey fallacy revolves around trying to defend a controversial position, a Bailey, by defending a loosely connected common sense assertion which is impossible to argue against, a Mott. An example of this would be if I said that women don't belong in the workplace, and then when asked to defend my position, I said, you can't deny that there are biological differences between men and women. You can see how the two concepts here. So you see, that's exactly what he's doing, uh, pivoting from this bill to the specific question of late term abortion. Now, I don't know how he's defining late term abortion, but we do know that, quote unquote, late term abortions in terms of, you know, like the baby's about to be due are performed only in instances where the mother's life is at risk, period. And we also know that Donald Trump and others are running around the country just lying <laughs> about killing babies after they're born. So I don't know what kind of spin Shapiro is trying to do on this, but he did a Mont Bailey, and he's also being disingenuous about what that actually means. And I also would like to say, you know, in terms of the sacredness of life, uh, well, well, we'll get to what Ben Shapiro said about Trayvon Martin after the rest of this clip. You suggest that a late-term abortion is brutal. I'm not taking a is view it a brutal on this policy issue. I'm to asking you the questions. Sir, you just suggested the pro-life position is inherently brutal and terrible, so I'm asking you, as an objective journalist, would you ask the same question well, to a pro-choice advocate by what, calling what their I'm, position brutal and horrible? What I'm asking you is that why is it that a bill banning abortions after a woman has been pregnant for six weeks is not a return to the dark ages. What's your answer? My answer is something called science. Human life exists at conception. It ought to be protected. Now, back to my question to you. You purport to be an objective journalist. BBC purports to be an objective down the middle network. It obviously is not, it never has been, and you as a journalist are proceeding to call one side of the political aisle ignorant, barbaric, and sending us back to the dark ages. Why don't you just say that you're on the left? Uh, is this so hard for you? Why can't you just be honest? <laughs> Mr. Seriously, Shapiro, I, it's a serious question. Mr. Shapiro, if you only knew how ridiculous that statement is, you wouldn't have said it. So let's <laughs> move on. <laughs> I also love because it's like Ben Shapiro has built this whole like ludicrous, sad brand of like, you know, this sort of like faux, you know, this ridiculous posture of sophistication. And he's he's having an exchange with basically what he's sort of indirectly molded his whole this whole dumb persona off of i mean i'm sure you know he's studied the buckley tapes and everything even though he has none of that kind of fluidity but like this is what it all comes back to it comes back to sort of like high tory sort of like disdain and he's on the receiving end of it and he doesn't even know who he's talking to he thinks andrew neal is like labor or something i mean I, that this is this is genuinely mind-blowing that this guy has a brand as an intellectual. I just like to remind everybody. I mean, I guess, you know, and I think this is true clearly for a lot of these people that when they're done, and obviously this is really about controlling women's lives and autonomy and bodies, but even if we were to stipulate, and we never should, but I will for this specific instance, that there's a concern about babies. Um, I don't know when that concern stops, but if you'll remember several years ago, 
In 2013, there was an innocent uh, teenager who was killed by George Zimmerman named Trayvon Martin. And uh, Ben Shapiro said, in reality, Trayvon Martin was a fully grown man with a history of violence who got into a fight with a Hispanic man, George Zimmerman, under disputed circumstances, then was shot in the chest while beating Zimmerman's head into the pavement. So he took, of course, Zimmerman's uh, and his lawyer's account at face value. We do know that Weird. Zimmerman, a very disturbed person, <laughs> was following and stalking. I believe Trayvon was only 13 years old. Um, and this child ended up murdered. Uh, and then as Hassan Piker says, Ben, Hitler could have been rehabilitated, but Trayvon Martin had a coming Shapiro. So uh, after this, after embarrassing himself by throwing that tantrum and asserting that he was talking to some type of, uh, of anti-conservative journalist, uh, <laughs> the interview went on until, uh, and we're cutting some of it, the whole eight thing, eight minutes is pretty funny and revealing. But, the full uh, thing is actually 16, so we're 16. actually missing out quite a bit of this. Okay. But this is the last. This is the last. The this is when we finally have our. This is when the. Uh, this is when the. Um, how dare you, sir? And you know, read one of uh, Ben's thriller novels to really show because he had to. He had to show what it was. The sirs are really flying. The sirs are flying. As you say in your book, you say that there's quite a key phrase. We are so angry at each other right now, but as I say, aren't you part of that anger? Aren't you? Encouraging that anger. For example, you dis you described Mr. Obama's State of the Union address in 2012 as fascist mentality in action. Well, I think that if you are want if you want to argue with the characterization, then we can talk about what exactly his State of the Union address said. Is it charged language in politics? Sure. The problem that I have is not with charged language in politics, which I'm generally in favor of. I like a robust public debate and a very loud and 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 spirited public debate. I have no problem with that whatsoever. What I'm talking about is the assumption that people with whom we disagree politically are inherently of bad character or, in your words, want to bring us back to the dark ages. But again, it was your description of the State of the Union address in 2012 as fascist. That's... The wording of, of President Trump's 2012 address <laughs> was He's so bad and wrong. That's all. There are plenty of things that are bad and wrong, but it doesn't make them fascist. <laughs> well, I suppose... That's true, but if you would like to, again, if you'd like to read me the Pause column it. out loud. Uh, that was logic. Andrew Neal just gave him a little A plus B there. If you'd All like right. to read me the column out loud, I suppose I can critique it for you. Oh, well, again, with Mr. Obama, you said, Jew, and you're, you're Jewish yourself. I only mention that because to put this in context. The Jews who vote for Obama are, by and large, Jews in name only. Ginos, you call them. <laughs> My statement was based on the fact that Jews in the United States, as an ethnic group, are largely irreligious, which is true by every single poll. Jews are the most irreligious totally group in the United States. As an Orthodox Jew who actually takes Judaism seriously, the point that I am making is that most Jews who are ethnically no. Jewish are not religiously Jewish in no. any context. Martin no, no, no. The point you were making is that Jews who vote for Obama are Jews in name only. I said, I said that, yes, that is correct, that Jews who voted for Barack Obama, a progenitor of the Iran deal, a person who was cracking down on religious liberty, a person who spent much of his career as president of the United States attempting to deprive Israel of the necessities to defend itself. Pause it. I, that, look, that, I, I'm sorry. I mean, I, I, there's just a few things in this torrent of lies and bullshit. Okay. <laughs> Unprecedented funding uh, for Iron Dome as an example, Right. Ehud Barak said that no other president had done more in terms of security cooperation than Barack Obama. And those of us who actually care about Palestinian civil rights and self-determination were appalled by the Obama administration's endless support of Israel, no matter what they did, including at two different times uh, during the transition in 09 and then back in, and then in 2014, uh, such ferocious bombardments on Gaza that even in 2014, Joe Scarborough questioned as an example when Israel bombed a UN school. So, you know, again, crackdowns on religious liberties and all this. I mean, he's talking about uh, pharmacies needing to be able to give women the day after pill. Okay, so he's, you know, using this maudlin, melodramatic, disingenuous language. But at some point, we need to inject a little bit of reality. Also, the Iran deal supported by sane people in Israel like Ehud Olmert and the intelligence and um, members or former members of the intelligence and military apparatus. Go ahead. The necessities to defend itself. 
that, that people, Jews who voted for President Obama, by and large, cared about Judaism far less than they did about other priorities. Did you said they should Correct. turn their badge in as a Jew? Uh, yes, I believe that if you are a, I believe that if you are somebody who takes Judaism seriously, that comes along with ideological, ideological commitment. I mean, I guess. The, also, I'm just. I mean, I, I mean, I, I hope you're having fun. By the way, going through every old tweet that I've ever sent to try and do gotcha ooh, questions. But if you'd like to have a discussion about triggered. my general philosophy or things I've done in say, I don't know, that was 2012, so it's now 2019. If you'd like to discuss oh, something I've Jesus. done in say like the past five years, why don't we do that? What a How about whiny that? little. Because creep. your book is uh, a criticism of. Uh, how angry America is and how America has to do better. And I'm simply I have an entire list out, on my website, sir. Sir, on I, my I, list, I have an entire website of I'm dumb, I'm bad things that I've said. I'm simply trying to point out some of the things you, you've said that seem to me to help to stoke that anger. For example, you said sure. Israelis like to build. Arabs like to bomb crap and live in open sewage. <laughs> well, as I say in an article entitled, here's a list of all the giant, bad, dumb things I've ever said. Was that, that, was that includes, dumb? What? Yes, that's a dumb tweet. And not only, a, but it is also important to mention that the next few tweets clarify that that tweet is specifically referring to the Hamas leadership, which, no. by the way, a BBC I've, I've seen is relatively reticent to condemn. No, actually, it wasn't what you went on to do and say. Uh, Paul, I, it's sorry, just I, beautiful the way, because he took some dumb, you know, and of course the BBC condemns actions by Hamas. <laughs> the BBC is quite moderate. It just acknowledges international law and an example in Israel, Palestine. But I just love that Andrew Neal does not even feel the need yes. yeah. to go down with, go chase that dumb little chestnut. Just like, okay. Well, and it's back it, to actually what you were saying. You can see the dishonesty in Shapiro in that tactic there, right? Yes. Cause he, he, he talks about, you know, he he's characterizes the subsequent tweets as if they are, um, as if they basically make that tweet not dumb, right? And and then moves on to make an assertion about the BBC that he thinks Neil is going to follow up instead of that. But Neil impressively stays on the uh, stays on the trail. Mention that the next few tweets clarify that that tweet is specifically referring to the Hamas leadership, which, no. by the way, a BBC I've I've seen is relatively reticent no. to condemn. No, actually, it wasn't what you went on to do and say. <laughs> Uh, you are correct about the slur and our Arabs. It's not all Arabs that want to live in open sewage and blow things up. It's just Palestinians, you went on to say. No, it, no, it, no, and, and it then says you the said, ones who take sides and against you said Israel the in the Israel-Palestinian population is rotten to the core, you went on to say. Not Hamas, I say by, the yeah, Palestinian I say by poll, Arab I, population. I say that by poll numbers, they elected Hamas. They elected Hamas. They educate their Pause children's... In Wait, I thought you weren't saying that. So now we're going to justify saying that with the usual litany here. Yeah, it's interesting. I thought we were yeah, talking... Why yeah. do you need poll numbers to talk about the Hamas leadership? Wait, I wait, and I thought you were disaggregating from Hamas from the regular Palestinians. But now because they voted for Hamas, maybe they all are actually bad. Ergo, maybe the tweet isn't a problem? What are we saying here, Ben? Hmm. The yeah, Palestinian I say by poll, I Arab population... I say that by poll numbers, they elected Hamas. They elected Hamas. They educate their children in school that Israel should be obliterated, sir. I guess. If you want to sir. read, con you know, honestly, sir. Uh, th this is a giant waste of time <laughs> in the sense that the entire interview is designed for you to shout slogans or old things that I've said at me. I don't see how this forwards <laughs> the debate. You talk, about, you talk about undermining the public discourse. It seems to me that simply going through and finding lone things that sound bad out of context and then hitting them with, and then hitting people with them is a way for you to make a quick buck on BBC off the fact that I'm popular and no one has ever heard of you. Uh, there are not many bucks <laughs> to be made on the BBC, unlike American broadcasting, Mr. Shapiro. Uh, I get, the point You're I'm trying paid, to make seems. is that your words are hardly designed to produce the consensus and understanding that the book seems to want to produce. Uh, that's my point, that you write about you know, Judeo-Christian culture and so on, but so much of what you've said in the past would seem to turn its back on Judeo-Christian culture. You're lecturing me on Judeo-Christian culture after you call the pro-life position barbaric? Uh, I just really? asked you a question. All he does is evade. And I asked you a question. You failed to answer a single one of mine. Well, Frankly, you're I there find to this whole thing a waste of time. You if you want to read the book cretin. and critique the book, why don't you read and critique the book? If you want to read, if you want to critique me, you can think whatever you want of me. Why don't you frankly, try and I don't care. The I, don't, I don't frankly give a damn what you, you think of me because I've you, never heard of you. You and I've never heard of you until I briefed myself for this. But that's not the issue. You have a then new book. Then why the hell are you interviewing and me, it's an, in, it's an interesting book. But my point is, your book claims that society... Well, it'd be society, nice if you would quote it from time to time. Your book is... Well, actually, I've done so several times, and I'm about to do so again, if you would let me just finish the question. 
you bet, that frankly, I don't think this, society you know what? Honestly, is turning honestly, its back sir? on Judeo-Christian values. Yeah, this is, what are those values? What are, that it's, what, what are the values it's turning its back on? <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I'm not inclined to continue an interview with a person as badly motivated as you as an interviewer. So I think we're done here. I appreciate your time. All sir. right. Thank you well, so much. thank you for your time and uh, for showing that anger is not part of American political <laughs> discourse. Now, Mr. Shapiro, we'll say goodbye. Ben doesn't like it when context oh. isn't provided yeah. for uh, certain tweets and things like that. Man, wow. uh, he's got to be the feeling era that of the mark. pajama boy is over. <laughs> Word. And if he's your intellectual leader, you should be fucking embarrassed. The cool kids philosopher. The baby. cool kids philosopher. Keeping it. Get cool. out those cool kids. You know what's so funny is I'm not even like. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it would be unpleasant, but it's like so tightly. If 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 I if I get to be interviewed by Andrew Neal for my book, and he's like telling me like 2013, you said that <laughs> Sam Harris, you know, had less braids than Zoolander, but equally less charm than Neville Chamberlain. What do you say that? I would be like, I would be like, you yes. just made that quote up, but that's awesome. I wish I said that. <laughs> Could we extend this interview to grill me for another 10 minutes, sir? Is this just a highlight reel? Yeah, for you? This is a <laughs> that's the fun thing about being like, when we're really nasty on Twitter, it's to like fascists. Right. <laughs> Exactly. It's the bad people. It's the bad people. That's beautiful. Watch all of it and uh, tweet follow-up questions to Ben respectfully oh, yeah. and cordially. Ben's, Ben's uh, actually, hold on. Let me bring yeah. up Ben Shapiro's Twitter feed because he's been tweeting about this. Because <laughs> um, he's pretty triggered. <laughs> yeah. So basically he said, you know, he was underprepared for going onto the... Uh, onto the show yeah, okay i mean i would say yeah just about in general underprepared oh my god um, i remember this other point he said that he walked out of breitbart out of principle and i mean i guess sure oh yeah that yeah, would sure. not be my guess is that i think that m more of my interpretation would be yeah well whatever here's what ben said uh, af neil destroys ben shapiro so that's what it feels like winky face broke my own rule and wasn't properly prepared i've addressed every single issue he raised before <laughs> Uh, see below. No, that's not true. As as, as Neil points right, out, right? That's why he was talking to you. Uh, and, Still, it's Neil one Shapiro zero. And then uh, let's see what else. Uh, I think he said something else. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. I can't find the other one. But oh, whatever. Ben Shapiro is a bad person. Respectfully follow up with him. You're calling from a.